All right, well, welcome to Celebration Online. My name is Stephen. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, I want to welcome you to our online service. We got a great service plan today. As always, if it's your first time, I want to let you know what you can expect. We're gonna worship through song. We're gonna have an opportunity to give. We're gonna hear an incredible message as we continue our written in stone message series. Now, before we get into a time of worship, I want to encourage you if you're watching our premier service, go ahead and drop a line in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from, what God's been doing in your life. We wanna we wanna worship with you, we wanna encourage you, we wanna celebrate with you all. All the great things that God is doing. Let's pray before we worship together through song. God, you are incredible. Thank you so much for the opportunity for us to do this today, God, to have a, a service where we're gathered from all over the city, state, region, and even the world, Father. And right now, we ask that you'd visit us wherever we're at. Father, we ask that you would um, speak to us in a very direct and clear way during today's sermon. In Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you make the 
Man, that was an incredible time of worship just now. I love how we just ended that song, how there's power in the name of Jesus. We believe that here at Celebration Online, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain in your life. Thank you so much for joining us here. Trust me, you're not going to regret it. We're about to lean into a great message today from Pastor Manley Miller as we continue our Written in Stone message series. But before we do that, we want to give you an opportunity to give back to God, to sow a seed here at Celebration Online. And the way you can do that is two ways here. First, go to celebrationchurch.org slash give. You can set up reoccurring giving that way, or you can go to webcc.info and click on the Give Now button. There, it's super easy. You can do it a couple seconds from your cell phone, from your laptop. Really easy way to do that. I want to encourage you to go ahead and do that. And at webcc.info, you can also access, as always, our sermon notes for today so you can follow along with the sermon. Trust me, you want to take notes today. It's going to be an incredible message from Pastor Manley Miller. Let's go ahead and lean in. Welcome to Celebration Church's online campus. I'm Pastor Manley Miller. I'm so privileged to be talking to you today as we go through our Ten Commandments Written in Stone series. Last week, we preached from Exodus chapter 20, verse number 3, talking about the importance of putting God first in our lives. And today, God doubles down on that. He almost takes it a bit further as we move into the second commandment. I'm reading from Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 through 6. The Lord says, You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them. You must not worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon the children. The entire family is affected. Even the children in the third and the fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and on those who obey my commands. Now God is expanding this idea. Not only does he want to be first, but when he's not, he gets very jealous of that, the scripture says. His consequences for that, not just for us, but for all the generations that passed us. And I don't know about you, but in my own life, I've been battling against some generational things, some things that I inherited from my forefathers, parents, family, all of these sorts of things. And I want to instead change the trajectory and pass on to my kids what God calls the lavishing of his unfailing love. And the way we do that is by learning how to prioritize the Lord first and making sure nothing else competes with that. This is the foundational value of being a Christian, to continue living and serving God. And we need to find all the spiritual and practical ways to do this. Jesus reiterated this from the very start of the book of Genesis to the end of the book of Revelation. God being at the foremost of our life is the number one thing and nothing else being there. Mark chapter 12, verse 30, Jesus said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. See, every human being has a desire within them to worship. That's what we were created to do. But many times we don't want to worship the Lord because that requires obedience and sacrifice and humility and service and allegiance to the Lord. Instead, we'd like to create some other type of image that we can worship or focus on. And this happens in all kinds of ways, shapes, and forms. And it it used to start out historically where people would make actual physical idols. And nowadays, even things like horoscopes are things people look to try to find answers in their life or whatever it might be. But even an idol can be anything else that comes in a way. I think probably the most crafted idol in the United States of America is straight up cash, right? Something with the image of a person on it that we're giving our allegiance to and we're serving and we're pursuing and we're focusing on. And these are the kinds of things that we need to break free of in our lives. Exodus chapter 20, verse 4, the Lord said, you must not make an idol of any kind of image or anything in the heavens, the earth, or in the sea. It doesn't matter where you find an image, you shouldn't be worshiping anything. You shouldn't worship your wife. You shouldn't worship your kids. You shouldn't worship your job or your career or money or anything. You shouldn't worship your local football team or soccer team or baseball team. Or You shouldn't worship some deal that you're going to get or some place where you go shopping or some celebrity or some Kardashian or, or some real housewife or anything. Nothing in your life should be placed before the Lord. Now, this commandment doesn't prohibit art. It prohibits the creating and crafting of things that we then give our devotion to. And we can craft those things physically, or we can craft those things mentally, or we can craft those things emotionally. And sometimes they're even 
ideologies. In verse 5, the Lord said, don't bow down to anything but me. And unfortunately, it's a human tendency. It's something we all wrestle against to constantly find other things that we give our lives to. Some people have created metal idols. Some people have created material idols. Some people have created music idols and mental idols. There's so many different things we can do. Augustine, the great theologian from the 4th century, said, idolatry is worshiping anything that ought to be used and using anything that ought to be worshiped. What we need to do is worship the Lord, not use Him, not look at Him like a slot machine or a power ball or something that we put money into, pull the trigger on and get something back. No, we worship, we honor, we praise, we celebrate, we honor the Lord, and we cast down every other thing. We tear down every other thing in our world, and we want only God to be number one. And this getting rid of idols is so important because, number one, having idols in our lives causes problems for us. Anything that we put in God's place that's not God is only going to cause problems. John Calvin said the human heart is a factory of idols. Every one of us from his mother's womb is an expert at inventing idols or something to get in the way of the Lord. In Romans chapter 1, we read that the people were so deceived by their sin that they traded the truth about God for a lie and they worshipped and served the things God created instead of worshipping and serving the Creator Himself. Let's think about why it causes problems. First off, it causes problems in our relationship with Jesus. It causes problems in how Jesus sees us and how we interact with Him. Whenever we have idols, we end up distorting who the Lord is. In John 4, 24, Jesus said, God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. It's impossible for any material or mental image or thing that we would craft or create to truly reflect who the Lord is. They don't reflect how he operates and what he is. The Lord is unfixed, unchanging, and we can't see and understand all that he is. And when we try to create him in an image, it always falls short. Having idols also degrades the Lord. It brings him down to a level he was never meant to be on. If you've got to understand God in your head, if you've got to craft an image of God that you can see and understand, then the reality is your image of God isn't big enough because God is beyond all human comprehension. And also when we have idols, this disturbs our relationship with the Lord. It affects it. Exodus uh, chapter 20, verse 5, the Lord says, I'm a jealous God and I will not tolerate your affection for anything else. These are strong words coming from the Lord. These are the Ten Commandments that he's given to Moses to give to the people of Israel, the people he's just set free and wants to bring to the promised land. He says, man, I'm not going to tolerate you giving your worship to anyone or anything else, I created you to worship me. You know, it's so interesting. Everything that God created does what it was created to do. A dog acts like a dog. A cat acts like a cat. A pig acts like a pig. Raccoons do raccoon things. The human being was created to worship God, yet it's the one thing of God's creation that doesn't do the thing it was called to do. Exodus chapter 34, verse 14, you must worship no other gods for the Lord whose very name is jealous. Is a God who's jealous about his relationship with you. Listen to me. The thing God wants from your life is for you to worship him. That's what he create, created you to do. And he is intent on you fulfilling that purpose. And he is not going to let you go until you're doing the thing that you have been called to do. And many of you, you're running from that. You're not. You're like Jonah. You're trying to get away from God's calling. And God's trying to bring you back in and say, man, when are you going to worship me. It's like my wife. My wife, if I come home at the end of the day and I'm on my phone, she'll say to me, why don't you love me? She doesn't mean I don't love her. She's saying, why aren't you paying attention to me? Why am I not good enough? Why am I not the first thing you want to think about? Look at what God has given you. Look at who I am and how much I love you and care for you. Why can't you love me back? And that's what the Lord says when he sees us worshiping or putting anything else before him, prioritizing anything else before the Lord. Not only does it cause problems with our Savior, with Christ, when we have idols, it causes problems for ourselves. You know, when we have and we worship idols, it's real disappointing. Jeremiah 10, verses 14 to 15, Craftsmen are disgraced by the idols they make, for they carefully shaped works that are a fraud. These idols have no breath, no power. They're worthless and full of ridiculous lies. Listen to me. Every one of us need to understand that whenever we try to create something that's going to replace God, it's never quite what we need. It always falls short. It always overpromises and underdelivers. 
Also, when we have in worship idols, it brings distraction to us. It's real distracting to our relationship with God. 1 Corinthians 12, 2 says, When you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept along in worship and speechless idols. I can't tell you how many people I have talked to who have finally come to their senses, repented of their sins, given their lives to Christ, and the only regret they have is that they never did it sooner. What happens is all of these little things we start chasing, all of these lights, all of these sirens, all of these little things that glitter around us that we get focused on and we start looking at, they distract us from truly worshiping the Lord. The goal of the church experience, the goal of you worshiping here today is to try to get you away from the distractions in your life. I mean, even while you're watching this, you got a cell phone going off and you got a television that's on and you've got this coming in and this notification and this that's happening. All of these things are distractions to keep you from focusing and worshiping the Lord. And that's what idols do. They distract us. Another thing that happens is when we have and we worship idols, it degrades ourselves. It degrades our relationship with Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 continues on. Before you knew Christ, you were controlled by dead idols and they led you astray. God has a plan for you. He's got a vision for you. And when you allow something else to become your priority, you get led astray. You get sidetracked. I don't know if this ever happened to you. You ever looked up in life and thought, man, I got sidetracked. How did I end up here, this wasn't where I was supposed to be going. This isn't the relationship I was supposed to be in. This wasn't where my career was supposed to end up, how my college experience was supposed to go. This wasn't supposed to be how this ended up or this ended up. And we, we end up getting sidetracked, and God wants to bring us back in. And when we get idols in our life, when we get things before the Lord, when something else begins to take God's place, we often get led astray. And then when we worship idols and we have idols in our life, it's devastating to us. Think about what the Lord says. The Lord says, when you've got idols in your life, I'm so jealous and I care so much about this that I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected. You know, there's been this rhetoric that I've heard most of my life as a Christian where you meet with somebody, you talk to somebody, and they go, look, I know that I'm doing these things in my life. I know I'm drinking. I know I'm smoking weed. I know I'm partying. I know I'm living like this. I know I'm gambling. I know I'm doing this. But what I'm doing isn't affecting anybody but me. What a great lie that comes from the devil. Now, man, every choice you make affects the people around you. It affects your family. It affects your friends. It affects the people you work with. It affects the communities that you live in. The choices that we make are not independent of anyone else. And when we make the choice to allow something else to take God's place in our lives, there will always be consequences, not just for us, but for our families, for our children, for our grandchildren, for the generations that come behind us. Every single one of us needs to make sure we don't get caught up and wrapped up in putting something before the Lord in our lives because when we do, it brings destruction and chaos. Not only not only do we need to make sure we don't have these idols because of the damages that they cause, we also need to realize we got to get rid of idols because they keep us from experiencing God's provision for our lives. You know, in verse 6, the Lord says, I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and those who obey my commands. And think about what God is saying here. This is the 10 commands, the 10 commandments, the 10 principles, the 10 words, the 10 phrases, the 10 ideas. These are all ways you could translate this phraseology here. And these concepts are commandments from God. Commandment means a prescription, something that is written down beforehand to lead us and to get us into a place where we're going to be blessed and in the place that we want it to be. It's like when you go to a doctor and they say, here's your prescription. They're writing it down beforehand. Go take this before you end up in destruction or in sickness or in illness or the case that you're in gets worse. And then you have to choose, do you want to follow that prescription that was given to you? And the Lord right here is saying, man, I want to give my unfailing to you and a thousand generations that come behind you, but I want you to love me and obey my commands. And my command right here is that you don't allow anything in your life to sit and take the place where I'm supposed to be sitting. See, when the Lord is first, then we experience his forgiveness for our sins. Psalm 103, let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins. This past weekend, I had the privilege of baptizing a young lady. 
And when she came down into the water, as is my custom before I baptize someone, before we talk out loud publicly, I got down on one knee and I whispered in her ear and I said, listen, I want you to understand the decision that you're making today. Baptism is a symbol that tells the world around you of the changes that God has made in your life. We go down into the water as a symbol that we've died to ourselves. We come up out of the water as a symbol of new birth in Christ and the Holy Spirit has come alive to live within us. And then I said, the third thing is we get baptized in water because it's a picture of cleansing. God has forgiven us of all of our sin, past, present, and future. And as soon as I said that, she took a deep breath and tears came streaming down her face. She felt the weight of her sin being taken from her. And as I saw that, God convicted me and he said, Manly, don't ever forget that I've forgiven you of all your sin. When you have an idol in your life, an idol can't forgive you. So when you allow God's position to be replaced by something else or someone else or anything else or anyone else, what ends up happening is you forget about God's great forgiveness. You forget about his love and how he's cleansed you from all unrighteousness and that all of your sin has been wiped away. We need to be reminded that when we surrender our lives to the Lord and we put him first, he wipes out the stain of sin and he forgives us completely. The guilt is gone. The Bible says that they're out of his mind. He remembers them no more. They're out of his sight. He's put them far from the east is from the west. He remembers them no more. He blots them out. God has forgiven us and we live in that forgiveness when God is in the proper position in our lives. When we put the Lord first, we also are reminded that he heals us from all of our sicknesses. Psalm 103.3, God forgives all my sins and he heals all my diseases. While the Lord does heal people from physical illness, his greatest work is when he heals us from all of our emotional and mental and relational and spiritual bondages. Luke 4.18, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see and the oppressed will will be set free. Every one of us can get caught up in certain hurts, habits, and hang-ups and things that get in our way and become anchors for our soul. We start walking around through life with big packages of luggage that would cost an extra hundred bucks if we were trying to get on a Southwest flight because they got more than 50 pounds in them. These weights hold us down. They keep us back from everything. And when you got God first, he reminds you, I've healed you of all that. I've delivered you of all that. I've set you free. You can drop those bags. You can walk free. I've taken all of that weight off of your back, but you can't walk in that if the Lord isn't the first thing in your life, if he's not in the right position. We also need to be reminded when we put the Lord first that he gives us eternal life. Psalm 103 verse 4, the Lord redeems me from death and he crowns me with love and tender mercy. Well, he has redeemed us from death. It doesn't matter how good your life is here on earth. The one thing that ain't going to change is you're going to die. I remember being a kid and I heard the phrase, the only two things that were certain in life were death and taxes. And then I found out some of y'all ain't paying taxes because you're getting paid cash under the table. The only reality is death. And if you live long enough, you realize death is upon us. Certain body parts start dying. Right now, I got tennis elbow and bicep tendonitis. And the only way I got it was by going to sleep. The doctor said, you sure you ain't been working out? I said, man, I ain't worked out in two years. How could I hurt myself working out? How you get tennis elbow when you ain't been playing tennis? Because the body is dying. This whole arm right here is dying on me right now. That's what the body does. And you can put as much silicone in it as you want. You could try to beef it up, cut it out, do whatever you want. You're still going to die. And the Lord sets us free from the pain and the suffering and the fear of death. And he reminds us of that every day when we walk with him in the proper position. There's no idol out there that can promise you eternal life. Some of them promise you a better life, but none of them can promise you eternal life. And no matter how good your life gets here on earth, you need to be equipped and prepared for the eternal life because your soul is eternal and it longs for something beyond this body. And then the last thing is the Lord blesses us in many ways. Psalm 103 says, God fills my life with good things. When the Lord's first, he gives us his presence. When the Lord's first, he gives us his provision. When the Lord's first, he gives us his protection. When the Lord's first, we walk in his power. When the Lord's first, we live in his plans. When the Lord's first, God surrounds us with all the people that we need to be around, the godly people that lift us up. That's why Jesus said that my purpose in John chapter 10, verse 10, is to give you a rich and a satisfying life. 
Deuteronomy 4.40, the Lord said, If you'll obey all my decrees and all my commands I'm giving to you, then all will be well with you and all will be well with your children. It's so important that we look within ourselves, we evaluate our lives, and we say, what's the most important thing in my world? If it's anything but the Lord, then we'll never experience all that God has for us. God's promised to give us a rich and a satisfying life, his blessing, his provision, his power, his peace, his purpose, the plans that he has for us, the people he wants us to be with. But we've got to surrender our lives to him and constantly wrestle to make sure that he's the very first thing. He should be the first thing we're thinking about when we wake up and the last thing we're thinking about when we go to bed. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4, we all know that an idol is not really a God and there's only one God. In 1 John 5, 21, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. My prayer for you today is that you would search your soul for every single thing that gets in the way of your relationship with God and that you would immediately tear it down. You'd immediately go into demolition mode and you'd tear down every altar, every sacred thing, everything that you've put above the Lord. You'd tear it all down and say, you know what? The only thing I'm going to worship in my life is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's first. He's the only and when you put him first and in the only place he belongs, it's amazing all the changes that begins to happen. Let's make this the priority of our lives today. Heavenly Father, I just lift up this service to you right now. I lift up every single person watching online, every single person listening. I pray that you'd take away every distraction in this moment. And right now, we would just focus on you. Pray with me if you're listening. Heavenly Father, I tear down every altar and every idol that gets in the way of my relationship with you. Even if it's a good thing, I know it's not a God thing. Let my focus and my worship be on you and you alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Well, I told you you wanted to take notes today. Thank you, Pastor Manley. That was an incredibly challenging message. Something that he said that stood out to me was that your decisions don't just impact you, they impact the people around you. And as we talked about the importance of the idols in our lives and only putting Jesus first, I wanna encourage you to reflect on this week's message. And the way that we do that here at Celebration is that we do that through life groups. And a lot of you are watching right now, you are in a life group, you are gonna unpack this message during the week. And I wanna encourage you, go to life group, engage in life group. If you're not, you can still get connected. Let us know by going to WebCC info. Go ahead and fill out that uh, communication card digitally. Let us know that you want to get connected to a life group, or you can email me personally. Go to on, email me at online at celebrationchurch.org, and so I can help you get connected to that online life group. Now, here's the thing. This message was so good. All of our messages are so good. You want to reflect on them, and you want to listen to them on the go. There's a way that you can do that. All you got to do is download our podcast. Go ahead and click the QR code that you see on the screen right here. You can listen to this message. You can share it through text message to a friend. Let people know this is a message that will challenge them in their walk with the Lord. So I want to encourage you, like this channel. Make sure you subscribe to whatever platform you're watching. Share this message. Let people know they can hear an incredible message here. And we cannot wait to continue journeying with you in your walk with the Lord here at Celebration Online. I'll see you next week.